leaping across galaxies in a fraction of a second, propelled by a form of energy with unimaginable power, taking mankind beyond the ultimate frontier into the depths of the universe. I'm Dr. Michio Kaku. I'm a theoretical physicist and a science fiction fan. Join me as I show you how to make sci-fi science. Science fiction is full of heroic stories of great adventurers exploring new worlds among the stars. But for years, all of this was dismissed as pure fantasy because the distance between stars is too great. But I'm going to show you how we might one day explore the universe. Imagine if we could design a spacecraft as advanced as the Enterprise. A starship that could jump to warp speed at the flick of a switch. Of course, for any serious sci-fi fan, being able to zip around galaxies in a flash is what it's all about. To explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, and to boldly go where no one has gone before. To encounter the unknown and make it known. To be able to see, see what is out there, making it possible to go to star systems in hours instead of, instead of years. Coming up with a credible design for a starship that will also satisfy the fans is going to be quite a challenge. To reach the stars, I need to travel a distance of trillions of miles within a reasonable time span. Exploration must occur within a human's natural lifetime. Our galaxy alone is 100,000 light years across, and there could be as many as 500 billion galaxies in the visible universe. It's a mind-bogglingly colossal place. To cover even a small part of the distance across the universe, I need to travel at extraordinary speeds. The fastest thing in the universe is light. It travels at 670 million miles per hour. So far, no one has designed any kind of vehicle that can travel at even a fraction of that speed. At the Brookhaven National Laboratory in New York, you start to get some idea of how hard it would be to build a craft that reached anywhere near the speed of light. Here, scientists accelerate electrons to mind-blowing speeds. This is where it all begins. Think of yourself as an electron inside a light bulb or inside your TV set. Here, there's a hot wire which boils off electrons, which are then accelerated through this pipe. And over there, energy in the form of microwave radiation is pumped into the beam, which gives the electrons a push. Just in this distance, they're traveling at almost 20,000 miles per second. Then, using huge amounts of electricity, electrons are catapulted around a 760-yard long ring to 99.999% of light speed. They emerge as a series of highly concentrated beams of energy. It comes all the way through here and actually comes into this microscope system that we can actually do scientific experiments with. And then you're seeing just the visible portion of the beam. But in 30 years of accelerating microparticles, no electron has ever reached the speed of light. That's because E equals mc squared. The faster an object travels, the more mass it gains. And if it reached light speed, it would gain infinite mass. The team here at Brookhaven prove Einstein's theory every day. The electrons are traveling to within 10 to 100 billionths of the speed of light. If we try to accelerate them any higher, they become more massive, but they never go faster or even as fast as the speed of light. So if it's not possible to accelerate one single minute electron to light speed, there's no chance of a starship getting there. Even if some future advanced civilization were able to accelerate up to those speeds, they'd still face some big problems. To keep something of infinite mass moving, they need more energy than exists in the entire universe. 
And if they could somehow reach the magical 670 million miles per hour, the effects would be devastating. As the ship gained infinite mass, it would simultaneously be crushed to nothing. But maybe there's a different solution, one that doesn't involve accelerating at all. There could be a way to break through the life barrier without violating the laws of relativity. There could be a loophole in Einstein's theory. We used to think space and time were separate dimensions, but they're not. In fact, they're so closely linked, they're known by a single name, space-time. If we have, for example, these piece of pie pieces representing length, width, height, and time. What Einstein shows us is that they can mix to create a fabric. They are actually intertwined together. The fabric of space and time is dynamic. It can be stretched, it can be pulled, it can be compressed. So space-time can be altered. That's vital if I really am to design my own version of the Starship Enterprise. If I can't go fast enough to reach the stars, maybe I can bring the stars to me. Imagine for a moment that this pepperoni represents your starship. And imagine that this anchovy represents Alpha Centauri four light years away. Imagine for the moment you could do this. Space-time is compressed so much, it effectively disappears. Cut a slice of the pizza out, and you remove the space-time between you and Alpha Centauri. Your destination comes to you. Your starship is now closer to Alpha Centauri, but you haven't moved at all. Space-time has. It may sound like something straight out of Star Trek, but there's one man who knows it can be done, and he thinks he can prove it. I'm designing a starship that can explore the universe. I can't travel at light speed. That breaks the laws of physics. But I found another way of covering the vast distances of space. I can warp space-time and bring my destination to me. Warp drive is a technology that sci-fi fans have known about for more than 40 years. Warp engines are powerful enough to actually bend space. Star Trek uses what they call a matter-antimatter mix to create a field around the starship to bend space to alternate dimensions to move faster than the speed of light. Gets you from point A to point Z without having to go through the alphabet. But it turns out that warp drive is more than just a science fiction fantasy. And here's why. This short equation may turn out to be a most extraordinary discovery. It might be our passport to the universe. And this is the sci-fi fan who came up with the idea when he was a college student. I was watching Star Trek one evening, and, and I was uh, on my PhD. Trekkie, yeah? yeah, exactly. <laughs> and in Star Trek, they always talk about warping space and relativity, and I thought maybe there should be a way in which we can do this consistently within relativity and not just talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the office, and then I spent all Saturday in the office doing calculations. And I did come up with a, with a model, with an idea, in which you can do a warping of space time that allows you to travel faster than light without violating any of the principles of relativity. Uh. Alcubierre's college professor was so impressed, he advised him to publish it. I never published a paper before in my life, so he actually had to help me to write mm. the paper and to <laughs> and all through the process of how you actually submit it to, to a journal, and it was published. Alcubierre's equation shows it's possible to warp space and time and leap across the universe in moments. Here at the Multiverse Exhibition in Washington, D.C., this travelator helps us understand how warping space-time can get us across the universe without accelerating. 